What if Michael Jordan's best game and the greatest game of basketball ever played was a game that no one saw and had 11 Hall of Famers ballot out? What is up dudes, dudettes, ballers, players, it's your boy MJ. Two weeks ago I had announced my giveaway and now I'm happy to say that David won the NBA jersey and Kiara won the gaming gift card. We couldn't get the 200 likes on a Leandro Ball video, so the shoes couldn't be included in the giveaway yet. Hint, hint. There were hundreds of participants, so I just want to say from the bottom of my heart that I wish I could give each and every one of you something, but thank you for participating. But hey, another bigger giveaway is coming soon, within this week, so you never know, you could be a winner in the future. But anyway, I wanted to talk about the greatest basketball game ever that featured the likes of Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Clyde Drexler, Chris Mullen, <laughs> Scottie Pippen, John Stockton, Carl Malone, David Robinson, and Patrick Ewing. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. Michael Jordan has said that the game was the greatest game that he has ever played in and that it was the most fun he has ever had on the basketball court. The man, the GOAT, himself said that about the game, which is pretty high praise considering the fact that Jordan has been a part of many legendary games. In 1992 in Monte Carlo, the coach of the Dream Team, Chuck Daly, said to have a scrimmage and not just any scrimmage. Keep in mind, the Dream Team is a nickname for USA's 1992 Olympic basketball team that featured 11 future Hall of Famers, including 10 first ballot Hall of Famers. When are we ever going to see a team with that many Hall of Famers again? The scrimmage was a full 5v5, 4 quarters, referees, coaches, but what made the game so amazing was the fact that the coaches were like, we're not going to coach, we're not going to do anything, they backed off. And they let the players do whatever they want. Daly split the players into teams with Jordan and Magic on opposite teams to light a fire. On a side note, Chuck Daly was a genius that somehow managed these superstars in the team and knew exactly how to push buttons to get the team to play together. Rest in peace my man, rest in peace. If you want me to drop a video on the genius of Chuck Daly, the Jordan rules, the bad boy pistons, drop a like on this video so I know you like this type of content. Now let's continue. So Jordan has his team of himself, Malone, Ewing, Mullen, Lautner, and Bird, while Magic has his team of Barkley, Drexler, Robinson, Pippen, and Stockton. Let me just take a step back. Each of those squads is a god squad in 2K. There's a lot of talent here, except for Christian Lautner. No disrespect to him, but Christian Lautner was a college player at the time who was the 12th man. He was not meant to get any playing time during this game. It was all about Jordan and Magic. Magic had been retired to this point because he had HIV, let's not get into specifics on how he got it. But there was not much understood at the time of how it spread. People were afraid that through sweat, they could contract the HIV virus and they were scared to play with Magic. Jordan was probably the most famous player at the time, coming off back-to-back -back championships and MVPs, but Magic wasn't ready to hand over the torch to Jordan just yet. The game starts out with both teams competing hard. Jordan hits one lucky jumper off the backboard, Magic comes right back and splashes a three in his face. He starts jarring with Jordan, saying right back at you. Jordan scores on Drexler, Magic gets at Drexler saying, you gotta get him back. You gotta get him back. Drexler blocks Jordan, then Barkley wants to take on Malone. Players are getting into it, their egos, their pride, the sweat, the tears, the physicality, everything. Just everything that made them some of the best ever to play the game. I would have paid a fortune to watch this game in all its glory, but the story of the game doesn't stop there. Magic Johnson's team had the lead at the end of the first quarter, and Magic kept telling Jordan that he wasn't the guy. Then Jordan turned up. This man went from 0 to 100 in a blink of an eye. He took over the game, making shot after shot, play after play, and when all was said and done, Jordan's team had won. He had taken the torch from Magic. Both Larry and Magic admit at the end of the game that Jordan was the man in the league. 
I think the game was monumental because it was signifying a change in the times from the 80s to the 90s. It was the transition. Remember, this is 1992, the early part of the 90s. So the 80s players were still trying to retain their dominance. Jordan rubbed it in Magic's face that it's the 90s now, and in typical Jordan savage fashion, he kept singing Be Like Mike to Magic. Think about how Magic felt. Michael Jordan, right after beating him up, said that you gotta be like me. That's just insult to injury. Now what I wanna know is why the only people that recorded any footage of this game were Barclays trainers. Why wasn't there press? Why wasn't there anyone else recording this as game film, game tape, anything? There are only a few handful of clips for this legendary game. They did the public a disservice. I've watched countless historical games, but I'm sure none of them would have compared to this. It adds on to Jordan's greatness that in the game of legends, he was somehow able to stand up on top. He was on Mount Rushmore even then. Even though this game wasn't game 7 of the finals, the game will forever be the greatest basketball game that no one saw. Comment down below, what are some of the best basketball games that were just never recognized or not praised enough? Let me know. If you like this video, drop a like. Let's aim for 30 likes. If we get to 40 likes, I'll drop a video on the genius of Chuck Daly or a video on the most requested basketball game that's been slept on. Subscribe if you're new. A new giveaway is coming within this week. And subscribe if you want more fire content. It's your boy MJ. We out.